There is a first version on the German channel, but why should I translate an older version when I now have an even better one? In that first video I calculated a dead time of 63 milliseconds, which is just way too high. So I'll keep the theory part the same, but first I had to swap out the detectors. Yes, this end window tube, it's rubbish. So I pulled it out. It's connected to the measuring electronics and a high voltage via BNC cable. Fortunately it wasn't really screwed in. This one also had a very small detection window and I hoped that a different type would give me better results. Luckily we have a huge box of spare parts, but if these counter tubes aren't really stored properly, things like this can happen. This counter tube is done for good. Cost? Around 300 euros. But hey, now we have a display piece. It really looks like the thing out of the textbook. I picked this counter tube because Detector 2 has one of the same type and it gives really good results. When I turn it on, it works at a voltage of 1320 volts. And then you can see it goes completely crazy, even though there's nothing radioactive to be measured. Why? This type is sensitive to light and some are so sensitive that you can connect them properly and everything, but they still won't detect anything because they are experiencing 100% dead time due to the light. I only mention this because the exact same issue cost me a few hours worth of time. And I thought two detectors were broken, but they were just overwhelmed by the light. Turn off the light and it still counts, but much less. Turn the light back on and it counts much more. Then inside the housing it counts less again. Which is how it should be. Radioactivity is everywhere, so it should always pick up a few background pulses. The nice thing is the operating voltage is already indicated, so all that's left is to hook it up and to use it. I do this via adapters and classic crocodile clips. For installing, we can now follow the other detector and see that the needle in the center is connected to the BNC and the wall of the detector is limited connected to ground. Once tested with the season 137, it turns out the detector works. Since we can't just leave it dangling around, I lowered the voltage again and found this spare mount. Okay, with the mount, the crocodile clip didn't fit so well, so I swapped the cables and now we know it works. But the focus was on the dead time. So what is the dead time? The dead time describes the time where the detector is dead. Okay, wow. Dead means in this case that the detector is busy measuring an ionization event and can only measure the next one once it's done with the other one. This is based on information mentioned in another video. A Geiger-Miller tube uses gas ionization where electrons from the gas molecules freed up from ionizing radiation are accelerated to the anode. In a proportional counter the number of electrons is proportional to the deposited energy. But that's not how our typical Geiger-Müller tube works. They operate at much higher voltages, the Geiger region. There the electrons are accelerated by this high voltage to such a degree that they knock out other electrons on their way to the anode. This goes on and on and on pretty much until the whole gas in the tube is ionized. During this time nothing else can be measured. The detector is dead. An extinguishing gas resets the detector in most modern tubes and then we can finally measure it again. This time is in the low millisecond range. Here we have dead time samples. These are simply different amounts of urinal acetate encased in some resin in an aluminium casing. The absolute amount of urinal is unknown, but the relative amount to each other is known. Which is the important part. They are placed in the holders like this, so that the resin shields the alphas and the aluminium in addition to that shields the beta radiation. So that they are now effectively just gamma emitters. The operating voltage is already labeled and I was able to verify it in another experiment. 1580 volts. Please adjust carefully. Measuring time is 0.5 times 10 to the power of 2 times 0.01 minutes. So the total measuring time is 5 minutes on this device. I hate it. And then let's go. I started with the 100 preparation sample to get a rough estimate. My approach isn't textbook like but it's efficient. I've now measured steps 0, 1, 2, 10, 50, 80 and 100. And from that I can determine the dead time during the measurement. Here's a tip for our students. Create data points to establish a frame for your values when it makes sense. Work efficiently and further data points can be generated when the rough frame shows that the values are realistic. And if you notice early on that something is wrong, you can talk with the lab assistant and it's better for everyone. You get suggestions on 
how to save the experiments and we get reports with values that can actually be properly discussed. Sometimes the experiment can't be saved, but at least you've already have an explanation as to what has gone wrong, rather than needing to come up with a stupid explanation from scratch. Enough talk, how do we analyze these results? Here are the raw data divided by the measuring time of 300 seconds. Of course, I made the diagram a bit nicer, and now it's time to calculate the dead time. There's our equation. For x, we plug in 0.5 or 0.8 or 1.0, and I'll do it for the 1.0. And I get 41.86 counts per second, which I should have measured, but I only measured 29.48 counts per second. Plugging this into our equation gives a dead time of about 0.01 seconds, so 10 milliseconds, which is much better than the dead time previously on the undercounter tube. All the dead time samples are correctly labeled and depending on rounding, you should get a dead time in the low milliseconds range. Also, I did the same thing for detector two and I got a dead time of 4.9 milliseconds, just to give you a sense on the scale we're working with. According to literature, Karl Heinrich Lisa, page 168, values range from 100 to 500 microseconds. We are way above that. These counter tubes are probably very old older than me, and if you ordered a new one, it would be expensive, but modern end window counter tubes fall within this lower limit or even surpass it. Anything else? I recommend doing this measurements only after voltage has been set for at least 15 minutes, but you'll do that at the beginning of the lab days anyway. A special thanks goes to the working group of analytics and fundamental nuclear chemistry from Dr. Erik Strupp and the division of nuclear chemistry at the University of Cologne and to my Patreons. With that being said, thank you for your attention and goodbye.